Welcome to Brands Hatch. Now this will be for sure the last race of the season. I didn't expect to be here today, but a bit of a last minute deal came together with the MSV Track Day Trophy. I'm going to be driving with Ian Seal in his trusty Ford Fiesta ST150. He's been racing in the Classica Modern Motorsport Club South that I've been doing the filming and editing and videos for, as well as racing the KA in this year, as well as the Honda actually back in Lyndon Hill at the start of the year. So it's going to be good to see how I can compare. I've never driven this car before as we go into qualifying here. I've only sat in it once, so hopefully the driver swap and so on isn't too bad. But the schedule for the track day trophy is a 25 minute qualifying session followed by a 45 minute race. So the idea is that Ian will start qualifying and the race. He's a little bit shorter than me, so it makes sense for the belts to be for him and worked all perfectly for, for that and then we'll loosen them rather than having to try and tighten them in the pit stop so it makes sense obviously as well for Ian to get out there get his few laps in and thankfully he's going to give me some more time in qualifying because as I said never driven this car before so I need as many laps as possible to get used to it Brands Hatch is a weird one it's definitely my local track it's about an hour north of where I am but everything else is at least two two and a half hours away so I'll say this is my local track and definitely the one that I as a kid came to quite a lot I remember a few seasons where I was at basically every event that was on because we had a, a season ticket so let's see how it goes I'm looking forward to seeing how I can compare to Ian I know he's a very quick driver he's been racing this car as I said all season he knows the ins and outs of it he's I think local to Brands Hatch as well so he'll be a good benchmark for me around here I'm not expecting to be anywhere near him in terms of pace but if we can be close that'd be really good for me now we're in class B not class D where the car should be because we're essentially a one-off entry we could have either gone in the guest class or class B I said I didn't really mind thought class B might look better on the timing sheets but actually it probably won't because there's only like three or four guest cars so yeah, it doesn't matter we're not going to be battling for the top positions I think anyway regardless if we're in class D I don't think we'd be anywhere near the top not down to Ian's pace but down to my pace obviously I haven't driven this car so I fully don't expect to be up near the front but we'll see how it goes hopefully I can have a good one but anyways we've got to go for qualifying uh, also racing here today a few people that I know um, Sam and Rob are racing in the track day championship they've got a chance of top two so I think that's actually maybe even going on right now their qualifying session so uh, wishing in the best of luck and obviously I'll hopefully catch up with them at some point and yeah looking forward to seeing them out on track also racing myself of course but at the end of the day there's the enduro car that I was planning to race in this whole year but unfortunately that plan fell through right at the end of the year so they're at the end of the day so they're going to be interesting to watch I never actually raced the K around here it's actually been a while since I've even driven Brands Hatch I think it was back in June with Christian wasn't it and that was a, a tough weekend for, I think all of us some psychological problems for myself and not feeling the best it was uh, not a great performance for me even though Christian did a good job out there regardless we'll hopefully be racing with Christian again next year and we'll see what this deal here today goes ahead like hopefully hopefully I do well hopefully I don't do too badly you don't let the team down but uh, yeah looking forward to this one a lot we just got the the go-kart track just behind us here I've never actually been around here so maybe at some point but I'm getting off topic let's get out there and qualify and uh, see how we do very cool to get an opportunity like this right at the end of the year in terms of the UK motorsport calendar this is typically the last big big event of the season I'd say now they've changed around the schedule somewhat we still have a festival called the Plum Pudding on Boxing Day the 26th of December in the UK but as for bigger events this is typically now the last one we see in the UK with the Enduro Car 500 held on the Sunday the day after this event so Ian is out first he's doing his half of the session then he would come in hand over to me as we're seeing here he'd pull into the pit lane after setting his fastest lap times and give me a chance in the car so as mentioned I'm stepping into this car for the first ever time in qualifying so maybe maybe it didn't show in the video beforehand but I was incredibly nervous getting into this car for the first time ever 
I expected it to be quite a big learning curve. Really am quite tentative when racing normally. It takes a bit of time to get up to speed and fully understand what the car's doing. So with a 25 minute session, that's not actually that much time around most circuits. Luckily around the Brands Hatch Indy circuit, you're blessed with a lap time under one minute so you can get quite a lot of laps in even if you have a shorter session to be split between two drivers here but the big boy now is getting into the car in his even bigger suit hopefully some of that weight will be lost into 2022 but here we go this is my fastest lap here i'm going to actually show you a side by side of mine and ian's fastest laps at the end of this one but this is the main camera seeing my fastest lap here so I can't lie, I was surprisingly quick to understand how this car reacts. Now, don't get me wrong, once again, I know this isn't a particularly fast lap time, but to get into this, the 58 to my first ever time in this car within 10 minutes or so, I was actually quite proud of myself. I genuinely think this was the quickest I've learned something this year to get this close to where maybe the limit is in this car, I think possibly very high 56s, maybe mid 50s, 60s, 257s is probably where the pace is in this car after some experience, but having 10 minutes experience to get into the 58s, I was quite happy with that. So it's a quite a short lap as you can see here, we're already at the end of it before I've got explaining how I thought the lap went, but now we're going to see a side by side of our laps here, you're going to see Ian's lap on the left hand side and then you'll see my lap on the right hand side, and I can't lie, I was pretty happy with myself with the lap in general. That was completely unexpected. Ian went out first, did about eight laps, I think, and then I would take over for the rest of the session. 25 minutes, so there was more than enough time around a short track like Brands Hatch Indy for a good amount of laps, and really important for me to just get as many laps in as possible because, well, I have never driven this car before until I set out the pits in qualifying. So just really happy with the progress, the car, I find it the, the right words escape me always when I try and describe this but it feels so natural to drive I wouldn't say easy is the right word but it kind of feels like everything handles like it should do which is really obviously what you want in a car driving it for the first time without a track day before the qualifying session so overall really happy with the the result so we ended up qualifying I think near the back in class because as mentioned we're in class B we should be in class D but as it's a one-off we're not entering in that one but regardless I think my best time was a 58.3 which I'm actually pretty happy with considering I'd never driven this car before and Brands Hatch hasn't always been my favorite track in terms of driving I have a bit of a I don't know what the right word for this is either, but I always struggle through Paddock Hill, just mentally, just making sure that I get on the brakes at the right time, because this is just such a daunting corner in many ways. I do have this thing about Paddock Hill Bend. I think I do take too little speed through it and brake too early and too much. That's just because, of course, I'm trying to be a bit too safe around it, but I think it's just one of those things that I'm gonna need to improve on over time around this track. It's just one of those corners, it's quite daunting. But best lap was a 58.3, that's 
pretty good for me. I think actually up there in terms of the quickest I've ever lapped Brands Hatch. I know I did a 57.5, 57.8 in the Civic, but obviously that's got 50 extra horsepower and yeah, you'd assume just generally quick around the lap. So overall, pretty good with that lap time and uh, looking forward to the race now. Ian will start. Uh, my lap time was the one that set the qualifying best, best time, so that, that was obviously a little bit surprising. Um, but Ian's not that far off, and I'm sure in the race he's going to be able to push on a little bit because at the end of the day, he was just making sure he could get back to the pits and everything was all good for me to go out there and learn the track. So he was just taking it easy, getting his minimum amount of laps in. Regardless, we're looking forward to the race coming up shortly. Some other stuff's going on right now. I mentioned Sam as well. Uh, Sam and Rob, they finished second in class to finish third in the championship overall, considering they missed the round or two. Pretty impressive stuff from them, so well done. I've already said it in person, but yeah, good stuff from them, and I'm looking forward to going later on. Interestingly enough, if we were in class D where this car should be, we'd have been fourth place in class out of what would be 12 cars. So I was quite happy with that. I know that my race pace will probably be a bit more inconsistent and and so on, but maybe I can improve on that time, but I'm not I'm not expecting it to. I'm sort of if I can go around that some sort of that time again, I'll be pretty happy. Anyways, looking forward to the race now. Ian will start. I'll jump in about halfway through and then we'll go out on track. Last race of the season then, I ran the track earlier this year when racing with Christian that I struggled at very significantly. For whatever reason, whether it was just that weekend or just something going through my mind, I struggled so badly on that weekend in June or July. But here, this weekend in November, weirdly when the track should be a lot slipperier, harder to drive I found it much more comfortable maybe just a season's worth of racing under my belt I felt a little bit better or whatever it was I'm not too sure maybe that last day of season vibes I was kind of getting into it so on board here with Ian he's going to take the start here at Brands Hatch I said we're sort of starting in the middle of the field which was slightly unexpected but we'll have no formation laps, so we're going to see the lights go out any second now and go racing. Unfortunately, the car wasn't quite in gear for Ian, so he had a bit of a tricky start there and ended up losing quite a few positions. But this, unfortunately, was a blessing in disguise because just in front of where we would have been if Ian maybe would have stayed in position, there was a big incident. So Ian was far enough back to avoid it here and it was unfortunately quite a big one there was a Porsche that was in the super tuned stable of cars that had rolled over I think this Peugeot had unfortunately lost control through the first sequence of corners taken out you can see a Clio there on the left hand side and big big damage to the Porsche unfortunately that wouldn't be repaired and red flags were understandably thrown that was a very scary one the start of the race but after quite a bit of time I think it was about half an hour possibly looking towards 40 minutes we got the race underway once more now I, I'm not exactly sure of the starting positions here but Ian gets a better start this time still quite a bit of wheel spin at the front here but regardless he gets into the thick of it straight away heading down to Paddock Hill Bend Good stuff here he's looking to the inside of a couple of cars there's another fiesta that's just creeped around the outside of us here and heading through the first corner an rx8 is going around the outside of us as well as a honda civic so ian was understandably keeping it quite cautious after the first race start still after all that there wasn't a formation lap we were still out there on cold tires and ian knows this car very well he's been racing it now for about two seasons so maybe he knows to not go fully to the max on the first lap on cold tyres he probably knows what he's doing in that regard so a bit of a tricky first lap uh, quite a few positions were lost here but regardless we got through it safely all of the panels on the Fiesta were nice and straight and here we are dropping just behind this white Fiesta here at the end of the lap which we'll come to later on this is an interesting battle with this car he was a rookie so probably less experienced than us of course I've now got a season's worth of experience this is Ian's second or third season in racing so I think we are still a pretty new team in terms of racing terms we haven't done that many races but we probably do stack up about halfway throughout this grid there are some really experienced drivers towards the top of this and was another car off there in the gravel I'm not sure that, that ended up being a safety car 
But anyway, a tough opening lap there, but understandably cautious after seeing that incident in the first start here today. So let's see what we can do here in this race. We've fallen towards the back of the field, but can we make up positions? Just finishing should put us in a good place, but of course, we're not really battling for any class positions because of this being essentially a guest entry so I was looking forward to my stint I knew the pace I could do in qualifying as mentioned I got into the 58s I think it was a 58.3 my fastest lap time which I was really happy about actually I know I try to not be too overstated in these videos but really I was quite happy with that time that was actually not that far of what I'd actually done in the Honda my first test session here a couple of years back but here you can see the yellow flags are out I think that's the safety car as well as you can see the car is off in the gravel and getting towed away are they covering that under double waved yellows yes they are sorry going back to green flag racing here so a few tracks in the UK you're allowed to live snatch the car under double waved yellows which is looks like it's what's happening there so personally not my favorite thing I'll ride with the marshals are under a bit more protection than that but regardless they were allowed to recover that car under the double wave yellows so of course that was another position gained for us so we're on board with Ian once more and we're coming up to a car that I think got a bit of a problem here because he's starting to go quite slowly. Not sure whether he's involved in an incident or not, but this black MX-5 is one you'll see quite a bit. He looks like he's already a lap down or two because he's getting the blue flags to win and we're not that far into this race. So I think he's possibly already been to the pits, but we'll see him later on as Ian gets lapped by the think the leader, the Caterham, which is slightly weird that it's allowed in the track day trophy but regardless I think he was a guest entry too but we were lapped there for the first time and then Ian was a little bit indecisive about what the second place car the Golf from Darkside Development was going to do there so he kept it wide and allowed him through as well but it gets quite tricky because there's quite a golfing performance between what we are which is essentially a class D car and the fastest cars out there which are very quick clapping brand hatch you know in the 54s 55s which I know there are cars out there doing sub 50 lap times quite easily but at this level of racing this is one of the most junior championships are out there driving for the first time it's one that's aimed at drivers just passing their art test and you do get some really quite quick cars in here which I guess is not always ideal but around a track like brand hatch there are plenty of places to overtake there's another car flying down the inside here. So we had lost a bit of time to this white Fiesta we can see just in front here. But Ian started to really claw back on him at the end of his stint here. So there's the leading Caterham going through to lap us once more here. But we're into the final couple of laps of Ian's stint. And he was looking to get the overtake done here on the white Fiesta and get us up a position here. So I think overall the pace was really strong from Ian towards the end of his stint he actually set his fastest lap time ever in the car which was just over one minute in the Fiesta so I think he was really happy to improve I remember him saying at the start of the day that this wasn't a day for personal best but he went and wiped that off himself and actually went and got his personal best ever around Brands Hatch which was good to see the track conditions weren't really perfect of course it was quite a cold day so there wasn't much temperature in the track but i've got to say ian you can see maybe chasing down the fiesta in front of him allowed him to get those faster lap times in after such a busy season i was at this time struggling to reflect on how the season had went and i will be putting together a video on my thoughts of the season very soon but going into this last race here i was feeling pretty nervous but then also after qualifying, actually quite confident. I was hoping that I was going to be able to go quicker in the race, which unfortunately didn't happen, but we got quite close, which I guess I can be quite happy about. So we're getting lapped by the dark side car once more. A slightly awkward place here because around these sequence of corners, the fastest cars aren't really that much faster than us, even though there's probably quite a bit of performance in it in terms of horsepower. 
Now up to the start of finish line once more, Ian is I think slightly letting a car go, no he's moving to the inside here so possibly there could be a faster car coming to our outside here, hence the track position, no he was just going towards the inside there, his optimal racing line. Looks like the white Fiesta has slightly got away through all that. The dark side Golf managing to get past him in the straight line, which is obviously a little bit more beneficial for the car being lapped, not losing so much time wondering what's going to happen. But Ian up there through Druids and down here has actually gained quite a bit of time there. Good stuff from Ian here. And I think he's setting his sights here on the overtake down the start finish straight here. It looks like there is enough pace slightly missed gear change here but going through the left hander pretty equal between the two of them through here so now it's all about getting a good run down here but i think this car is indicating to come into the pit lane here so it looks like ian won't unfortunately get a chance to overtake it properly he's moving to the inside there and ian has got past him but now has to have a couple of quick laps himself before i take over very shortly and we're going to skip ahead to that now ian i think sets his fastest lap and then he comes into the pit lane around here so as mentioned splitting the race as best as we could 50 50 so that we both get around 20 minutes driving time it's a 45 minute race of course we weren't 100 percent sure after the the snesting issues where we were the last race of the day and unsure whether we were going to get the whole race distance in we didn't then but even after a long red flag period we did get the full race in here today so ian comes in at the halfway point he jumps out i jump in Really great crew with the Super Tune guys. They did a great job. They prepared me right mentally and just, you know, getting me fitted in the car and everything. It was all good. I mean, it's not a World Endurance Championship pit stop time, but they did everything right and probably my quickest pit stop of the season. We've had a couple of tough ones with Christian in the 750 Motor Club. And then also myself with the CSCC, we weren't really going for timed quick pit stops because we were limited but also because we weren't really racing anyone so it was all about rather being safe rather than trying to maximize every second it doesn't matter so much in the ford ka let's be honest so out on track as usual a little bit cautious out here i was under a little bit of pressure i think from a car exiting the pit lane yes it's this mg so he goes past this here actually i did slightly let him through i was being a little bit cautious i was thinking okay the, the car's going to be cold but then really it's not is it the car is nicely warm <laughs> in every aspect and i let this mg through and he wasn't actually drastically quicker in here when i was quicker than down the straight i thought oh no i made a mistake here has he got an issue or something but now he did start to accelerate away he did have a bit more pace than us in the end but it wasn't it wasn't crazy we did manage to kind of keep up with them i think my my pace was good it wasn't as mentioned as quick as it was in quali but in general not so bad and here we're coming up to lap our teammate in the same car i gave him a little bit of a thumbs up as he drove past he was doing the whole race by himself and that's a that's a tough ask in itself in a, a track like brand Sanch, especially where it's very physical up to the start finish line there i think i give him a little bit of a thumbs up or a little thanks there. It's always hard to know whether the driver's actually looking at you in a scenario like that, but I did say thank you after the race as well. So that's uh, not really an overtake because I think we were lapping there down to turn one, but regardless, that is in my mind now going forward that I can be a bit bold, Alex. I can go for the move down the inside, but I know I was pretty much let through there, but regardless, it was nice to be slightly offline into turn one and be confident that I could break there because that was the big psychological thing early on in the season when racing with Christian. I was just, there was some sort of mental barrier going into turn one, panic kill bend. I was struggling quite a bit. But for this race, it was pretty smooth apart from this little moment here where I hit some fluid and did a little bit of a, a bit of a hop in the car. We'll play it back in slow motion so we can understand what's going on here. But a little bit of fluid on the track. I was one of the first people to hit it and it definitely caught me unawares it so we're at 25 percent speed here so turn in that's all normal so i don't think there's been any fluid on the track here but i think it's as we start to turn right here there's some fluid around about here and of course you're not really braking until you get to the end of that curb on the inside but then you can see here certainly some fluid on the track i just managed to correct it in time don't get me wrong, it's not a massive save or anything, but I was 
heart in mouth a little bit there for a second there because obviously I hadn't had anything like that happen in this car so I wasn't fully sure how it was going to react. A couple of cautious laps after that, the lap times had dropped off by a, about two seconds for the preceding laps but then I started to get back on it and by the end of the race my lap times were essentially as quick as they had been throughout this race here but here's that black MX-5 which I was talking about earlier. I have no idea what was happening here. It was going around very, very slowly. He ended up, I think, 10 laps down or something so something was really happening with that car as he was driving so slowly but as mentioned our camera unfortunately did fail so what we got for the end of this race is the v-box footage which is cool in itself we get to see my average speed around certain corners the gm pulling and Yes, I realise my best lap there isn't as good as it was in quali, but it's not that far off. When you're in a race situation, it's not too bad to be, what, half a second, seven tenths off. I mean, I know it's not ideal, but I was, I think, quite happy. I was obviously aiming to try and match it, or maybe even go faster, but that wasn't to be in the race here today. So, that white Fiesta that we spoke about earlier, that Ian passed as he entered the pit lane and Ian continued onwards, now we weren't 100% sure whether this was an overtake for position or whether it was to put him a lap behind us, but I think it was for position. We pulled to the inside here. I'm in the position that I was worrying about the most, being on the inside, attacking a position down to turn one, but I managed to pull it off. Now it wasn't the best lap beforehand. We were, of course, letting some traffic through that you can see in front of us here, but I was quite happy in myself that I pushed for that overtake. Of course I didn't need to do it, but I was quite happy to get that sorted and get the overtake done into Turn 1. As I mentioned, it was that psychological barrier that I was struggling with the whole season at Brands Hatch, but thankfully I sort of put that a little bit to one side and managed to go for it, which I was very happy about. Now up to the start-finish line, this will be the end of the race here. As you can see, we were finishing off with some 59 second lap times, which wasn't so bad. I mean, I slightly backed off towards the end there. Maybe I could have got my fastest lap on the last one there, but a big thank you to the marshals and everyone involved for putting on the show, especially after the red flag, getting everything sorted and getting us out there, making sure that no one was injured, of course, in very quick time. They did a great job there to make sure that everyone was all right. So... Last cool down lap of the season, of course, saying thank you to the marshals like I have done for the rest of this year. It's always a big thing for me to make sure that I do that because, of course, we can't go racing without the marshals, so it's very important for me to do that. So thank you back. So there we go. Last race of the season, a really exciting one. For me, at least, some overtakes in there, which I haven't really done too much of this year. But also some, I guess, consistent laps towards the end of the races, a good time in qualifying. After a few months of struggling with my confidence and when out there racing, I think I can finally say I go on to 2022 with a positive end in terms of the confidence. I got much quicker than I expected, quicker than I expected in this car, so I can be pretty happy with that. So as mentioned, I will be doing a roundup of the season, how I felt and what the highs and lows were. I guess some of them are pretty evident. But that's to come soon. Before I end this video though, I'm going to reflect on what was a really good weekend here with Ian and Super Duo Motorsport. So that's the day over here at Brands Hatch. I've just been out doing a bit of filming for the Enduro car that's out there right now. Lots of tyre squeals, uh, a few spins and so on, but it's been relatively clean thankfully, so that's good. But in terms of our race, I don't think it went too badly. There was unfortunately some big incidents right at the start of the race. Uh, teammate, and actually the person that helped me with my art test a few years back, Will Arif, had a roll, I think, but the car's quite badly damaged. I think, thankfully, he's okay. But yeah, it was a big one, and it took out multiple cars. I think he got tagged. I think he rolled over, and other cars were obviously trying to avoid it. So that was very scary to start off the race. Ian would stop and basically just go around that first lap before it was red flag, make sure that the car was not damaged. I think he pretty much had to come to a stop, but thankfully he got through that all right. I think all of the drivers are all okay, but still, nonetheless, it's a bit of a scary one. That one at Brands Hatch all tightens up, and unfortunately, that happens quite a bit, especially because there was no formation lap, which is a little bit odd. I guess it's to save costs, but I guess that means that there was some cold tyres out there, and understandably, people were still trying to find the limits 
in the very early stages of the race. But as for the race, once I got in, I took over from Ian. I think we'd, uh, we'd dropped down a few positions, but it didn't really matter too much. We were in a class we were not supposed to be, so at the end of the day, we were just out there to have fun. Uh, Ian kept getting quicker and quicker and quicker, and actually, I think he said his best ever lap time towards the end of his session, so I think he was quite happy with that. Then I would jump in. I think we had a bit of a slow pit stop. We were chasing down this white Fiesta, and we were pretty much, or Ian was pretty much right behind it by the time we swapped over, and then we were like half a lap behind it once I got out on track. So I think a combination of us having a slow stop and then having pretty much a perfect stop really meant that we lost a lot of time there. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I got out there, started putting in some consistent lap times. Didn't quite get under where I did in Crawley, which it's a bit of a shame, but I didn't really care too much. I had a lot more traffic in the race, weirdly. Qualifying, I was giving myself a bit of a gap and generally going quicker and quicker each lap, but that wasn't to be in the race. I didn't quite go quicker. I think it was about half a second off where I was in Crawley, but regardless, I'm still happy with the race. I think in general, one of the cleanest races I've driven. I put some good moves in as well. We got past that white Fiesta uh, with, a, for me, a bold move down into Paddock Hill, which is a track sorry, part of this track, which I'm always a bit daunted by, as I mentioned earlier on. So I'm happy that I was brave enough to go for that overtake there. I realize I'm still very much in the early stages of my driving racing career thing. But yeah, I was happy with that move there. It's definitely gave me a bit of confidence and just generally lapping quicker and quicker. And I think we finished up about half a second off already in quality. So good stuff. I say thank you to Colin and everyone at Supertune for the supercar. And so uh, yeah, looking forward to watching the rest of the KAs over the rest of the weekend but as for the track day trophy i'm pretty happy with the result in the end i think it just about went as best as it could do really after all the incidents early on we stayed out of trouble and we brought the car home so yeah pretty happy with that and uh, looking forward to 2022 because unless something crazy happens this is definitely the last race of 2021 right i'll see you on the next year goodbye